Titanfall 3 is probably never going to be made, but there is a solution. We make it ourselves. And here's my tutorial on how you could start doing just that. This is going to be a serious tutorial with all the necessary information. My hope is that it will inspire some of you out there to create your own Titanfall fan games. And maybe one day we will actually see Titanfall 3. I made a Unity project completely set up with animations and characters, so download it. But first, you have to remember to use the Unity version I am on. Then, download Git. To download the project, search for Git and open Git Bash. Then type cd followed by which directory you want the project to be in. While in the right directory, type git clone and then paste the name of the repo by right-clicking and pressing paste. You should now have the project on your computer. Then open Unity Hub, press open, navigate to the project folder you just put the project in and click open again. And you should now have the project. If you want to use some other version, a project you've already created, or perhaps even use Unreal Engine instead, then you're free to just steal the assets. However, remember that these models are ripped from the actual Titanfall 2 game files, so they're not mine to give away. But as long as you don't try to sell them, we should be fine. If you open the project, you will realize that you have this player character with a simple movement script set up and that there's nothing else around. But if you look up into the sky, you will see your titan just standing there. To make it come down, you could move it, but that is too easy. Instead, we're going to make it come down with a script. We make a script called Ender Titan or Titanfall or whatever you want, but it's going to handle both of these things. First, we need a reference to the Titans animator, and I am now quickly going to go over how I set up the animations. If you have downloaded my project, you will already have this set up and not have to worry about understanding it. Otherwise, you will need to actually listen now if you don't know how animators work. Here's the animator. It's got three base layers, but for now, focus on the first one. Here we handle the core movement. This layer is controlled by an avatar mask marking which bones are going to be controlled by the animations. Since all of the bones should be affected, I selected all of them and named the mask's entire body. As you can see, we start off by going into the idle animation. This animation is just a character standing still doing nothing. Then, when we activate the fall by pressing a button in our script, and the start fall trigger parameter is triggered, the titan switches to the fall animation. After the fall animation runs out, the idle kneeling starts playing, and when the embark trigger is triggered, we go to the embark animation, and then back to idle again if we're not doing anything else. As for the other animations, I'll go over them later when we get to them. Back in the script. We need a character controller to move the titan down when falling, a box collider to tell if we are in range for the embark, game objects for the rifle that is holstered on the titan and the rifle that it is holding in its hand, as well as a few variables for the titan and the player. We need a layer mask for the ground, a vector for the velocity when the titan is falling, a few bulls, and lastly a float for the falling speed. I should also mention now that all of the scripts are already attached to the character and you could just activate them, so you don't have to sit there and try to type all of the code yourself. But if you want to know what the code actually does, you still have to listen to me talk forever. Anyway, I start off by getting the range check box collider and the character controller in the start function. You will notice that these are already attached to the titan. I also deactivate the rifle the titan is holding so you can't see it until it has actually been unholstered. Then I create a function that is triggered when you start the titanfall sequence. In here you set the is falling bool to true and you trigger the start fall trigger, which will make the animator switch to the fall animation. We also need the logic for the falling, so we create another function where the y velocity is increased by the falling speed over time, basically simulating gravity, and then move the character controller with the y velocity. Lastly, in the update function we run the fall function if we are falling. As for the logic of the embark, I first turn off the player camera and then turn on the titan embark camera. This is a separate camera that allows you to see the embark animation from a third person perspective. I also activate the trigger for the embark animation and turn off the range check box collider. Below I have these functions for checking if we're in range. You're in range if you stand in the collider and otherwise you're not, and you can only embark if you are in range. After 1.5 seconds of the animation has passed, I switch from the holstered rifle to the rifle in his hand. So basically I have two rifles. I thought this was an easier solution than moving one rifle from his holster to his hand. When the embark animation finishes, I deactivate the player, which should now be inside the titan and I also activate the titan's main camera, as well as change these two bulls which we need later. The exit titan function works in the opposite way, only I don't have an animation for that right now. We activate the player again and deactivate the titan camera. I also constantly run the exit function in the update if you're in the titan, but it will only run the logic if you press E. This is how I assigned all the variables in the inspector. So now we have all the logic for the titan embarking and falling set up, but if you go back to the game you will realize nothing happens. This is because there's no way to call the start fall and the embark functions. 
And that is why we add another script called Access Titan to the player. And it's already attached, so you only need to activate it. In here, we have a reference to the Ender Titan script and two functions for starting the fall and for embarking with the Titan. The embark function only runs its logic if we're in range. These functions are also in the update method. Now you can press the V button and watch the Titan fall down. After you have walked all the way over there and placed your character in the range checkbox collider, you can press F to embark. In the inspector, I also assign the Ender Titan script to the field. You may notice that we're missing a lot of things, like all of the effects. So I leave that to you. Do whatever you want. Create particle effects, a shield VFX graph, maybe camera shake, and some sound would be nice. How to move and shoot the Titan works similar to how you would move and shoot any character, but I'm going to show you how to do it here as well. So make sure to activate the camera control and the movement scripts on the Titan game object. And I'm quickly going to go over the camera script. We have the animator for controlling the up and down aiming animations. For left and right, we just rotate the character. The min and the max X are so you can't just infinitely look up and down. Here we have some more variables to move the camera, and the yaw is also for the aiming animations. And then these variables are for the head bubble of the character. First, we lock the cursor to the middle of the screen. Then, in the update function, we get the movement of the mouse and move the camera in the X direction, up and down, and the body in the Y direction, left and right. Here you can see how we set the yaw variable. The aim parameter controls in which direction we're aiming in the animator. So, a value of 1 makes it aim up, and negative 1 is down. And then we have three different blend trees if you're walking, running, or idle. And you can't aim while sprinting, so we don't need a blend tree for that. This layer is controlled by the upper body mask, which only has bones in the upper body selected, minus the arms. In the update, we also find the head bob function. Head bob works so that it chooses which bob amount to use based on the move script, where you specify if you're walking, running, or sprinting. And we of course also need to change the camera with a sine curve, which looks like this, so you get the right movement. As for the camera setup, I made it so you can't see yourself, only a pair of arms and a gun, which in turn other players can't see. If you want to know how to recreate this effect, you have to assign the body and the arms to a different layer. And then in the Titan camera's calling mask setting, turn off the layer you assigned to the body and now you can only see the arms. Of course you have to do the opposite for all other cameras, so that they can't see a floating pair of arms. And here are the variables. But you can of course change the sensitivity if you want to. As for the movement script, basically it works so that you have your ground movement and your air movement. And also a function to check if we're on the ground or in the air. You can't jump, but it is possible to walk off edges, so we have to apply gravity. In the handle input function you sprint by pressing shift and ADS by pressing the right mouse button. When you are ADSing you're also walking. And if we're not walking or sprinting, we are running. The handle animation function switches between the different blend trees containing animations for walking, running and sprinting. The blend trees are two-dimensional and take in two parameters, your X and Z movement, which we get in the handle input function. So if we're walking forward left, we get the is walking bool telling us we should pick the walk blend tree, and then the input parameters tells us we need the walk forward left animation. And we also run all these functions in the update method. As for the dashing, when you press left control, your movement is locked to the input at the start of the dash, so you can only move along the dash direction. Then, we just increase the speed and set the trigger to the blend tree for dodging. We wait for 0.6 seconds, and then we turn off the dash again. This is all for the movement script, so you can now get in your Titan, look around and walk around. But the gun still doesn't work, so we're going to fix that now. Activate the Fire Titan Rifle script. This is a script that I partially stole from some other tutorial, so credit to the guy that made that. Anyway, in the handle input function, you can shoot if you're pressing the left mouse button, and if you're ready to shoot. You are ready to shoot if the time between the last time you fired and now is the fire rate of the weapon. Also, you can't be reloading when you shoot. When you shoot, you set ready to shoot to false, you get the spread and set the direction the bullets should be fired in to forward plus equals the spread. Then you should ray cast along that direction and get back what you hit. You play the muscle flash on both of the weapons and instantiate a hit effect on the thing you hit. This part right here is used to damage the enemy when we hit it by triggering a function in its script that makes it take damage. The reload starts when you press R. It then triggers the body, the arms and also both of the guns to perform the reload animations. The third layer in the BT animator is for the arms. So they are controlled by a mask with the bones in the arms selected. The only animation here are for the reload. In the script again, we set the bullets to the maximum amount once the animation has finished playing. And now we can go back to the scene and check out all the variables. Also, activate the enemy game object, which happens to be a Ronin Titan. This model has a script attached to it with a function that lets it take damage, and once enough damage has been taken, it dies. So, click start and get your Titan. 
but you can't because the enemy run is now running you over due to the fact that it's much faster than you. So, go watch my tutorial series on the Titan full movement, and you can now activate the map and wall run all the way to the Titan. Or if you don't want to, you can just move the player closer to the Titan. You will see that you can now shoot them and make them fall over. Basically, I made this tutorial to see if anyone out there likes Titanfall and would want to try and make a game of their own but don't know how to start. And of course I don't think anyone actually will create Titanfall 3, but you never know. I'm hoping that the Titanfall player base will one day rise up and create what is rightfully ours. And maybe this video could help them. If you follow along with everything, you now have a pilot and a titan. So go on and create your own models, effects, logic and game. If you don't want to make any game and just watch this for fun, that is also fine. Yeah. <laughs>